Well, hello and welcome to the show. Glad you're with us today. We're talking about dealing with excess energy. You ever had this horse to deal with? You see your friends with him out on the trail. He won't stand still. They can't get on him. You try to tack him up. He's dancing all over the place. You've seen your neighbor's kids like that. They're on their feet, stepping on your toes, jumping in your lap, seeking energy. That's what's really going on. This horse is wound up. He's nickering and screaming every few minutes and he's just wanting to do his own thing because he's not where he thinks he belongs. We're gonna talk about how to fix that coming up right here on Discovering the Horseman Within. Gonna take a ride on one true horse. When you see this horse dancing around like this, the next thing you see is people trying to hold on to him. And they've got a hold of him right here, right? Now watch him, he's pushing on me with his shoulder immediately, stepping into me. I got a question for you. If I give you a lit stick of dynamite, how long are you gonna hold on to it? Not very long. Me either, I'm gonna throw that thing. Your horse has at least that much combustible energy. He has at least as much combustible energy as a lit stick of dynamite. So why try to hold on to him? God created him to run when he's nervous. So move his feet. I intentionally designed my reins so that they come completely off and I can lunge my horse around me. And I can utilize his energy to do something productive, right? I can soften that nose while he's moving around me. Get him following his nose really nice and paying attention. I step out here and change that direction. What am I doing? I'm taking all of our groundwork, all of the groundwork lessons that we've worked on, and I'm just putting them to work with my horse. That's all I'm doing. Move him around here. This is a little harder for him. He's got to learn to follow the feel. He wants to give to that bit, but it's hooked to the outside now. He's got to learn to follow the feel of that pressure. He's got to give completely and almost reverse arc until he brings that nose right over here. I don't mind making it a little bit hard on him. Old Dunny's a nice horse, but he is wound for sound. So why would I come out here and risk my life climbing in the saddle thinking I'm pretty certain he's gonna settle down. That's not gonna happen. Now I'm gonna give him that chance to settle down. The mistake people make, right there, you see him leave me? Send him off, his eyes came up, his feet moved forward. Pay attention to these things, read your horse, know where he's at. The mistake that people frequently make is they believe the lessons that they learned are really only for clinics and arena time. I work out here all the time because this is where you ride, right? And I want you to understand these lessons are to be used every day, everywhere you go. When, it, when I lose him and he leaves me, move those feet. The next thing he's gonna do is nicker and step on you. Don't wait for it to happen. What did grandma say? Grandma said, a stitch in time saves nine, right? Preventative maintenance. Don't wait for your horse to make the mistake of screaming and stepping on you. When he's acting like this and he has wound up tighter than a nine day clock, you need to deal with it. Look at him, he's loping this little bitty circle around me. All I asked for is a bit of a trot, but he is so wound up, he can't stay still. So the mistake would be try to make him stay still right now. Let him move. We're gonna work when we get on him, you're gonna see more of the same. Step over here in front of him. Oh, I'm gonna just send him the other way. Hey, when we get on him, we're gonna see the same thing. Step out here, stop him. I don't need him on top of me. He's just like that little kid seeking attention, jumping in your lap. He just has to move and he has to be on top of you. You know why? Same reason that little kid is. He's seeking security. How does he get security? Through leadership. This is the first day, the first lesson that him and I have ever had together. And he doesn't trust my leadership. He doesn't know me from Adam and he doesn't trust my leadership. 
So once I'm able to move his feet, then he's saying, well, fine, I'll jump right on top of you because if you can move my feet, you must be higher on the pecking order than I am. So he's gonna jump on top of you looking for that. You've gotta take manners and break them down and, and write a list for yourself. What is my horse allowed to do? What isn't he allowed to do? He's not allowed to scream in my ear. He's not allowed to dance around me. He's not allowed to jump on top of me. He's not allowed to step on me. And he needs to stay focused on me no matter what, especially right now. Now there's times I'll let his focus go, but not right now. Right now, every time he takes his focus off of me, I'm gonna move those feet until he starts coming to class and staying with me. When I step over here, I wanna see that horse's eyes come to me. I need this horse to come to me. When I feel like his feet are starting to get still enough, will get on his back. Remember what happens on the ground happens on their back. They don't suddenly change. When you get on this horse, he's gonna have excess energy. So you want to deal with as much of it as you can and establish authority while you can. Just the other day, Trent came home and he told me, dad, I got bucked off today. He's riding a horse that has about 20 rides on it. And I said, well, Trent, it's a big draft cross horse that he's riding. And, and uh, I said, well, Trent, what happened before you got bucked off? Nothing, nothing happened, dad. And I told him that's where you're wrong. Something happened. You didn't read what the horse was telling you. That's pretty common for all of us. I try to read my horse and I still get it wrong now and then. But I want you to really focus, see your horse, see what he's doing. If he's got this much extra energy and he's dancing around, look, I hate groundwork, everybody knows that but it's a necessary evil to keep me safe. If my horse is dancing around and being foolish, use some of that. Do you need to do it for four hours? No. Do you need to do it till he's sweating? No. You need to do it until he's focusing on you. If that's two minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, I don't care, but you need to do it until he's focusing on you. Now, when I reach for the stirrup, I expect the horse to want to move. The fact that he stands still is perfect. But I'm gonna stand right here for a minute. Just let him relax. When I step down in the saddle, right there he starts to move his feet. So the first thing I'm gonna do is back him up. Just two or three steps, drop those reins. Anticipation is your friend, so use it. Everybody gets worried, oh, what if my horse anticipates? Well, here's what happened. I swung my leg over and old Dunny here anticipated going forward. So I backed him up three steps. What that's gonna do is develop in his mind the anticipation that we're going backwards, okay? Now look at the reins. You notice I'm not holding them. As soon as Dunny starts moving, I'm gonna back him up three steps. Drop those reins, okay? I don't mind him looking around and sniffing, but right there, his feet are moving. And you're gonna say, Ken, he only moved a foot. How many did you ask him to move? None, that's right. So if he only moved his feet three steps, that's three more steps than I asked for. What is that? That's jigging. Okay, look at him. He's decided he wants to head back off over to the barn and find some other horses. He's jigging at a standstill. And if you don't fix it here, what makes you think you're gonna fix it further down the trail? If you can't deal with it in the yard, you sure aren't gonna have any luck dealing with it on a narrow trail. So right here, we're just going to stand still. What if it takes forever? Well, it won't. Now walk off. Walk off before he decides to walk off. Make it your idea. Okay, now here, he's decided, take that shoulder and go towards the barn. So he's flopped his head around here. One of the things you hear me gripe about is horses that bend without turning, right? because he wants to go to the barn. We'll talk about how to fix that right after this. Teaching is probably one of the most joyful things I do in my life. I love to watch people learn. I love to see them change and I love to see them make life changes, follow their dreams. That's what our apprenticeship program is all about. It's a three level program. We start at the apprentice level, we move to journeyman and we finish at the master certification level. That program is about people achieving their dreams. These people, people just like you. That's what they're about. They're here learning so they can go home and create a career in horsemanship. 
So I've got two problems now I need to work with with old Dunny here. One, we don't turn. And two, we don't stand still. We've got all this excess energy and he wants to what? Leave. He wants to leave the country. So what I've got to do is start moving his feet. Definitely. Picking a direction and taking him there. So as I pick up on these reins, I want him to follow his nose. Well, he doesn't follow his nose. And you've heard me talk and talk about that. That's the result of way too much bending and not enough actual movement. So when I pick up on the rein, he's not allowed to just bend. I want his feet to move and his body to follow his nose right here. Now he's way more broke than this. This is a very simple, basic colt exercise. Yes, it is, but it's where he's at right now, right? Where he's at right now is he doesn't turn, right? He doesn't turn and he doesn't stand still. So be diligent. Move this horse's feet. Don't sit up here and hold the reins and hope for the best. When you see people do that, when they're up here and they're just holding on, they're holding that lit stick of dynamite. The wreck is coming, okay? So I want to move him around here, soften that face, move those feet. Right here, follow his nose. There we go. Take the lessons you've done at the clinics you went to or at the demonstrations you watched or the television shows and put them to work when the problem happens, where it happens. You know what my policy is? Fix it now. Don't wait for it to get worse. Don't wait for it to quietly go away because it's not going to. Fix it right now. If this horse is being hard to deal with, change that right here right now then you've got to give him a chance to do it right so stop him drop those reins well of course he's not going to take the chance back him up drop those reins back him up i'm not going to hold him still right that's his job now when he holds still for five seconds move him make him want a break make him actually really think about what you're doing and desire a rest period. That's what he needs. He needs to desire a rest period. So I gave him a five second break and now he's thinking, man, I wish that would have lasted longer. But I'm thinking, I've got a lot of work to do here. I've got to get these shoulders reconnected to his nose. I hate when I see horses just bending, bending, bending because they don't learn to follow their nose with their withers. They get disconnected. You've got to come back. I love soft. I love soft horses. I won't have one that's not. I love suppleness. It's great. But this horse has got to learn to follow through with his body, okay? So that when I have situations like this, I can control it. So I'm going to keep working here. You see me pick that rein up. It's kind of ugly. I ask nice. And if he turns, leave him alone. But right here, he thinks, man, we're headed for the barn. Picks up the speed, so I lift that rein and just kind of pull him around there. And it's ugly, but it's effective. And it gives me some control. Here we go. And old Dunny here gets a chance to come around. There we go. Nice, good boy. Look for the good in your horse. He is trying. You may not recognize it. So that's why you've got to look for the good, to make sure that when it happens, you do see it. Right there, lift that rein, make that turn happen. Reward him. Come back here, we're gonna face the barn, we're gonna back up and let him stand. No, he says, I'm out of here. No, you're not. Face the barn, let him stand. Don't fight this excess energy all your life, deal with it. Don't get rid of a nice horse just because he's got a little bit more energy than you're used to. Deal with it. Change the way he thinks. Change the way he sees you and looks for that leadership. That's the longest I've let him stand still, okay? I'm changing the way he thinks about standing still. Right now, he thinks standing still is a bad thing. I'm not doing any really great uh, important drills or exercises here. We're not working on our flying lead changes. We're just working on basics following your nose, softening into my hand, staying soft, and controlling your movement. And you see him wanting to jog, I want him to walk. He says, Ken, I want to use more energy than that. 
So if he does jog, I'm just gonna redirect it. I'm not gonna fight with him, just redirect it. Bring him around here. You can feel him, all of a sudden you can hear him breathing. He sounds like a dragon and his body coils up and he's thinking, I gotta go, I gotta go. When that happens, you've got to redirect. You've got to change what he's thinking. If you're sitting at home and you're a trainer and you're training for the general public, you've got to make this horse safe enough for the customer. And that means the horse has to learn to control those emotions. Everybody knows I hate the term desensitize because what do I want is I want a sensitive horse. Watch this horse, he's sensitive as all get out, I love that. But you know what he doesn't have? He does not have control of his emotions. His emotions are absolutely running wild. Right here, he's learning to control his emotions. He's just beginning. He's looking around. Oh my word, where's the next problem? Right here, buddy. It's in the saddle. That's where the next problem is. It's right here. I'm going to put you to work. What you need to be thinking about is me, not what's out there. There's a great song. You can look it up online uh, called Monster on My Back. I love that song. And it's a story of an old cowboy riding a young horse. And he's telling the horse, don't be looking for the monsters out there. The only thing you have to worry about is me. Well, I don't really want my horse to think of me like I'm a monster, but I do want him to think of me like I am the sole thing he has to focus on in a day. I want my horse's focus absolutely drilled on me. If my horse is worried about what's over there, he's not thinking about me. I need my horse thinking about me. You just see that right there. He kind of takes his shoulders and leans out. He's still thinking, Ken, where I'd really like to be is back to the barn. And I'm still saying, Dunny, I need you right here, right underneath of me. And we'll build that up right here. Turn, follow your nose, good. Stop, soften, stand. I can't stand enough, right? The more I do this, the happier I am. Now right here, he needs to walk off. You just saw him take a big sigh and life got a little bit better for Dunny. He stood there for maybe 25 seconds and life got just a little bit better. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick up on my second rein and just add that in and start softening his nose. So the next thing I'm gonna do is worry about shoulder control because I obviously don't have it with this horse. So in order to have good shoulder control, I need him right here between two reins. So I pick up on this second rein and when I pick up on a second rein, especially on a horse like this, I squeeze with my calves and maybe even roll my spur into his belly a little bit and round his back up and soften that nose. I want his focus. I want everything. People tell me, Ken, I don't need my horse collected. I don't ride a show horse. You know what? I don't either. I ride good horses. Oh, don't leave me. Right here, stand. No. It's my opinion that everything we do with a show horse, regardless of his discipline, should be done with every horse. Good horses are well trained and well behaved. Now this horse is a year away from well behaved, right? But in that year, he's gonna learn a ton. He's a great horse. All the handle is there. If I wanted to go show off on him, I could. But the experience and the ability to control his emotions are what is missing. I need to get my horse to that point where he understands how to control his emotions and how to make it easier on himself. And that's really what this is about. In the long run, my horse has to learn how to make it easier on himself. Traditionally, we might have done that by just getting up early in the morning and riding all day, several days. And when we do that, we would say, well, we gave him a job and he learned. What about the ones that didn't learn? What about the ones that had more energy than that, okay? So what I wanna do is teach. I wanna teach my horse to understand. I wanna teach my horse to come to a spot, no, where he understands who I am and what I'm doing. And when he comes to that spot, where he figures out that it's better to stand right here and wait on me than it is to jig around, we're going to be doing a lot better. When he moves one foot, I've got to move three, 
right? If I ride him up here, I rode him up. He was done standing still. When I stop him, he needs to stand still and wait on me. Nope, if he's gonna take a step, I'm gonna take three until he figures out how to stay calm, quiet, and gentle. Now, remember, this is one 20 minute lesson. It does not make a perfectly broke horse. What it makes is a horse who has the idea of where we're going. It gives him the idea of what we're doing and how to get there. You can see right here, we're back to struggling. It's gonna take the time it takes for it to be successful. We're not gonna kind of dance all over the place. There. That's a perfect spot to quit on because he's come to a spot where, again, he gets the ultimate reward for trying. And that's really all I can ever ask out of my horse is for him to try. Look at the difference. We're gonna stand still here and be quiet, not jig around me, not run around me. Just gonna actually be standing right here, being partners a little bit and being friends. That's what I want out of my horse. I want him to try and I want him to learn to control his emotions. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as we've enjoyed bringing it to you. And until next time, may God bless the trails you ride. Find out more about Ken McNabb horsemanship at KenMcNabb.com. That one true horse, the perfect partner built to ride. One true horse, a bond that cannot be denied. You would search forever just to have the chance to take a ride.